the dates, but anyway, we'll get some guys together, maybe June 2nd and 3rd or something like that, kind of help them load up on this end. Brother Rick is not able to do anything like that, uh, so he's gonna, they're going to need our help. And we love them, and they've been part of our church for a long, long time. But um, they're, they're from Missouri, and so they're kind of moving back home around family and so forth. And so we want to pray for them. Then remember Myrna Gathright? That's Brother Corley's brother that broke her, or sister rather, that broke her hip recently. I'll get it right. And so she needs our prayers, and, and that God will be with her. And then Miss Christina's here tonight, and Levi, and we're excited about them being here and pray for her as she uh, continues to heal. And and uh, that God would just continue to bless them in a special way, and, and uh, that's a blessing. And I'm just kind of scanning down the list here. Brother Terry Smith, uh, Brother Dalton's uh, uncle, had, had bypass surgery recently. We want to pray for him. And um, Dominic Bailey. Uh, Dominic, how are you doing with your, your everything hanging in there? You got... Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. You wouldn't know that there was anything wrong with Dominic just looking at him, but he has a, a disease or whatever you call called venous malformation, and it's where his body produces clusters of arteries. And so all of his life, ever so often, he'd have to go to the children's hospital, and they have to thin those clusters of arteries. It's very painful. I've been to, uh, up there with him many times uh, for that procedure. And, of course, you know, he's get, the older he gets, you know, just more and more issues with... Uh, with his health so he, he just needs our prayers and just you know you can imagine uh, I mean all of his life he couldn't play sports or anything like that because if somebody accidentally hit him and you know just the clotting and all he just can't you can't you know, like bumping into him or something like that he can't really do the, the, the bruising that maybe other people could no, maybe normally do and, and having knots and lumps and things like that so anyway just pray for Dominic I love him and I know he's, he's young but he's had to suffer a lot in his life with with that so just pray that whatever they're trying to do for him this next week that it would be a help and a blessing moving forward um let me give you another one uh dr raymond barber is a preacher friend of ours and dr barber was at a meeting this week um the independent baptist fellowship um uh, international meeting and and uh and uh, he fell out and uh, he's in his 80s but um, they took him to hugley hospital and and uh, they had to, I mean, bring paramedics into the service and all of that. And, and um, it wound up, I think, being like maybe low blood sugar. So just um, thank the Lord it wasn't anything more serious, though, even though that is serious. But just pray for him if you would uh, do that as well. I mean, add him to the list. That would be a blessing. And then uh, continue to pray for Rob Kirsch, Brother Billy's son. And um, he'd had some strokes here recently. And we've been praying for Rob that God would, would be with him and, and uh, help him, you know, physically and rehabbing and all of that, and and uh, uh, that would be a real blessing. I know Brother Billy and them would appreciate the prayers uh, on his behalf. And and um, all right, I'm just looking down the list here real quick. I didn't mark them. I normally have them marked. Um, does somebody else have a prayer request tonight, Miss Peggy? Right. Yeah, the Millers are one of the first missionaries that we took on. Uh, Brother Carl Miller was my youth pastor when I was a teenager. They've been missionaries to Scotland all these years. And, and uh, man, he's a street preacher. I mean, they do all kinds of things over there, just getting the word of God out in Scotland. And uh, anyway, we love Miss Lita, and uh, she used to sing specials at her church. And, you know, you remember all that, those things, that getting to serve the Lord together for a time there. But they're great people, and, and uh, so pray for Miss Lita. And uh, they've been through here a couple times over the years, but everybody loves Brother Carl and Miss Lita. They're 
they're real deal missionaries and we thank the Lord for them. Um, remember our school graduation is this Friday night as well an award ceremony and so uh, that'll be a good time in the Lord. Pray for Miss Lisa Owens too and, and uh, Miss Lisa and them have had a lot going on here recently and, and um, in addition to her uh, illness and then also Miss Patsy Lee and uh, that's we call her Mamma, but Miss Patsy uh, Lee is Miss Lisa's mom and and uh, she's been having tests done and so forth so I want to remember to pray for for her as well and we appreciate that very much all right somebody else with prayer requests Miss Jamie Okay. 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 All right. What What is her first name? Ruth. Ruth. Yeah, Ruth. Okay. So um, we've got Jerry Wayne Gwynn there on the list. So if you can put Ruth, his wife, as well. So that's a real tough situation because she's been taking care of him, and then now she's needing help herself. And and. Uh, Continue to pray for missionary Maurice Young and, and uh, uh, as far as their family, the Maurice Young family, Brother Young went home to be with the Lord and, and uh, Dalton uh, Weedo and I went to the funeral Saturday morning and, and they uh, was able to give a testimony and we love Brother Young. He was a real deal missionary to Taiwan. There'll be a lot of Taiwanese and Chinese uh, people in heaven because of Brother Young and the, the works that he started there in Taiwan or on Taiwan, however you say it. And, and uh, one of his daughters is there working in one of the churches. Of course, he turned churches over to national pastors and so forth, but uh, great long-standing missionaries and, and uh, loved them. And, and um, Mrs. Young told me that uh, Brother Young uh, loved me, you know, thought a lot of me, and, you know, just made me feel good that I took, put forth the effort to go to the funeral. You know, we took an offering from our missions program to help because he was in Taiwan and just fell out and had a massive, massive stroke and then went to the hospital and just didn't make it, you know, and so... Uh, then you have, you know, the expense of getting her back and, and the body back and all that stuff. So we were able to help, and a lot of other churches had, had responded as well. So we thank the Lord for that, just to be able to have a little part, and uh, that was a blessing. All right, thank you all for praying for me, by the way, too. Um, I was kind of down for the count on Sunday. I, I don't even know, probably could count on one hand the Sundays I've missed over the years just being sick. So I, my, my motto is don't call in sick, crawl in sick. But uh, I don't do nausea very good. I really don't. I'm, me and nausea don't get along. And so uh, I woke up about 1.30 in the morning and just was very, very sick and um, thought I was going to pass out. And I was hollering for Brother Josh to come help Miss Deanna was out of town. And anyway, uh, whew, that was a rough few hours there. And then so was, uh, I thank the Lord for Finnegan, whatever Finnegan is. I don't know what Finnegan is, but uh, I popped some Finnegan or whatever, took some Finnegan and and uh, I went to sleep, amen. So I think it's a sleeping pill, amen. Then you just, you take it and go to sleep. And then when you wake up, you hopefully you feel better, you know. But anyway, that's what the effect it had on me. But thank you all for praying, okay. Uh, Roman? Okay, we have a group of, of several families and students going, I think 12 students, something like that, going to the International Student Convention in Florida. So we've got some traveling going on uh, over the weekend. And, and uh, some will be heading out Saturday and then some at Sunday after church and be heading that way and representing our school and church, families, everything uh, in the competition there. And we've got a lot of different categories. You've seen all those uh, plaques out there and all that. So real, real proud of our, our young people. And, and I know they'll do a good job and do their best to represent us for the Lord. Amen. Brother Freddie? Yeah, pray for us. We're leaving Saturday morning. And uh, we'll be with Dan Clark again next Sunday. And then we'll go to Mississippi. And then we'll be with uh, the Mountain Brother Joe Rivera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, amen, amen. Now, yeah, no, that'll be a blessing. But Dan Carr is a dear friend of mine. I love Brother Carr. He's a blessing, great preacher. Got a great church in Gulfport. And that would be Brother Ferret's uh, pastor. Yes, sir, Brother, Brother Chad. Uh,
Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that boy got saved and that blessing. And uh, I mean, really, honestly, that boy had some major issues. The devil, you know, just and, and there, there are you get in these other countries and there's a lot of contrary spirits, demonic spirits and, and that stuff's real, you know, and, and that boy had major issues. And, and, you know, the Bible tells a lot of stories about that, you know, people falling out and, you know, foaming at the mouth and all that stuff, you know, and and. Um, but thank the Lord that boy got delivered. Amen. We had another major answer to prayer this week, too, and I just thank the Lord for that. Maddie? Maddie? Okay. All right. Jag uh, traveling back from uh, Texas, and Jag's over there. And uh, my wife got her car, if she hadn't told you. Um, you can see her after church and get the name, rank, and serial number of the, of the car. And Miss Christine will give you the name, rank, and serial number of the baby, and my wife will give you all the, how many, everything about her car after church, okay? I think she was more excited about this car than she was anything I've seen recently. So anyway, it's pretty awesome, but I'm happy she's happy, amen? Somebody said, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, so I'm glad she's happy, and I'm very happy that she's happy, amen. Somebody else, Brother Tucker? Okay. Okay. Brother Bobby Tucker's going to be heading out and going down to preach for my nephew Aaron and, uh, in uh, Temple Baptist Church in New Iberia, so that'll be a blessing, okay? Cooper? Okay. All right. Yeah, Dylan's wedding, okay. Yeah, we're going to be heading there. I think the Beverly Hillbillies are going to Washington, amen, from, from Arkansas to see my grandson get married, and so... Anyway, that'll be a, a, an adventure, and uh, some are flying and some are driving, and I have no idea how it's all going to work out, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Miss Mandy? And what was his last name? Crawford. Crawford, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's pray for him and that God would be with him. And, and uh, all right. Uh, uh, Ashton? Okay. Oh, your dad had to use the alligator grabber to get the chicken snake out of the chicken house. Amen. I guess we're praying for the chickens, okay? Yeah. We're thanking the Lord. That might be a praise. Amen. Yeah. Dad saved the day. Praise the Lord. Maddie? Okay. Yeah, we got the wedding shower for Dylan and Isabel, and that's coming up. What's the date on that? Uh, June 5th? Okay. Yeah, June 5th. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's bow our heads and we'll miss Deb. Last week I was supposed to pray for the Cowley family, the mother that had some health issues and then one of the sons was in a coma in Little Rock and she had to be stopped last night. She said she got the call on Friday when the sun woke up. She said she thought that he had a, a cancer thing going down his blood, but she said he was just vomiting. And she Praise the Lord. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Praise the Lord. Well, it's obvious we got some praises tonight. Isn't that good? Right. And it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Miss Cindy? Um, Haley's got that injury on the tooth. Uh-huh. Blood clots, and they just All right.
Okay. Right, okay. All right. Okay, so pray for Andy Ramsey with blood clots and then also for Bridget, um, Bridget Perry. Yeah, Bridget Perry. It's raining outside. Um, that's what that noise is. It's rain hitting our metal building. And uh, yes, ma'am. Your grandma? Okay. All right. Miss Barbara McFadden. All right. Well, let's, um, let's bow our heads tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Freddie if he would ask the Lord to bless these requests tonight. Father, we come to you tonight. Thank you so much for your shelter and protection here under the rain. And then it would be a Wednesday night service and sing the song of Zion and hear good, great preaching. And Lord, we pray for just that. Lord, you'll bless our preacher and give him liberty as he, as he speaks and help us to be listeners, spiritual listeners. Bless Brother Cochran, Rick, Rick and Tammy Cochran, and this stuff that helps our church. Lord, as they move, Lord, I, I, I thank you that people are willing to help them. And, and I pray that it will be a smooth transition there and you miss them. And, and I pray maybe one day they'll be back. And but Lord, uh, God, we thank you for that couple. I pray you bless them during this time. And then also, uh, Terry Smith, the bypass surgery going on at Dalton Smith's uncle's. I pray that would be successful and it would go well there. Heal Dominique. We all love Brother Dominique. He's such a blessing, young man. He loves the Word of God and is so faithful. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help him on the field. Somehow a miracle report on that biopsy on Tuesday. That somehow this would go away and, and uh, he could have relief and comfort. And we'll give him grace during the times that he's going through and help him and bless him. And bless Dr. Barber that uh, had to kind of spell out there at the meeting. Fort Worth. I pray, Lord, you'll be with him. He's such a great old saint of God. Lord, I pray you'll give him many more years and, and not let him be wrote off. I pray the doctors will be mystified about how he got back up and got well so quick and got back to preaching. Lord, bless uh, Rita Miller, missionary over in Scotland. I pray for her situation with her leg and that this thing can heal a lot faster than they think. Be with Lisa Owens that has fighting off the cancer. And it's been such a, a long battle for her. Please bless her. Give her the victory, Lord. And I, I pray. I thank you for the report, the good praise reports about this Juan Carlos. They got to lead all these people to Christ. Twenty something people are saved, and Lord, then this demon possessed boy gets saved. Lord, what a blessing! Yeah. And Lord, we serve a great God, and you can do it. And and I and I thank you, Father, for that. And I pray now that you'll let a church get started there. Let let uh, others be saved from it, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit will work. Bless Dylan and Isabella on there. Soon be married. Bless their wedding shower and all that goes on there. And Lord, just uh, keep them clean. Keep him preaching. Keep him sold out for you. And Lord, there's other requests I missed, but Lord, we lift them up before you and we thank you for your goodness. Bless us here on Wednesday night. Lord, give us let our cup run over and get a blessing tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Um, let me get you three guys right here and Andrew y'all come help us take the offering amen we're going to pass the offering plate tonight and um, we have been putting the baskets in the back and they're still back there we're going to get back come on uh, Caleb yeah you three one two three four that'll be good yeah thank you guys we, I don't, we may have already had ushers lined up I don't know but anyway if you need an offering envelope slip your hand up these guys will get one to you we kind of quit all this for a while and just let you get it in the back and but we're going to get started back, amen, and thank the Lord for ushers, and uh, it's a blessing. Yeah. If you just slip your hand up, hold it up, these guys will get you one. If you need one for the road, amen, uh, put it in your Bible, amen, that'd be good. All right. The tithe is the Lord's, amen. I'm glad I learned that as a little boy. I was so excited every Sunday. I was so excited to have my offering envelope. I mean, I was so excited. My Bible, my King James Bible, and my offering envelope, and I was good to go to church. And I always wanted to give something in every category, and I'm glad I've never lost that spirit to give and help others, amen. I learned that as a child in church, in a church that had a heart for souls, and that's how you learn, amen. 
And by nature, we're selfish and stingy, but man, thank the Lord for our missionaries and thank the Lord for a church that has a heart to help reach the world that Jesus died for, okay? Brother Andrew, would you lift up your voice and ask the Lord to bless tonight, please? Thank you, Ms. Crystal. I'm going to read a prayer letter here from uh, missionary Paul Jant, and this would be um, Brother Freddie uh, Reed's brother-in-law, and we've supported Brother Paul. He's one of our first missionaries. We've probably supported him now for 20, 20 I would say 28 plus years, 29 years maybe. It says, Dear pastors, churches, friends, and family, thank you for your faithful prayers and financial support. It is always an honor to take the gospel into the juvenile justice system for you. I was in a cell block witnessing, listen closely now, in a cell block witnessing to several boys, and all of a sudden, two boys got into a confrontation. Two officers separated them and stood in between them. The officers were incredibly brave, but I could tell they weren't going to be able to de-escalate uh, de this problem. When two 17-year-old boys want to fight, they will find a way to fight. I knew these boys are in different gangs, uh, so I assessed my surroundings and could tell this could result into a gang fight. It was time to move down the wall toward the door and exit quickly. The two boys started chasing each other around the room to get away from the officers so they could fight. They got in between me and the doors, or in the door, so I couldn't exit. Uh, these two came together and I could tell they were experienced fighters. They were both receiving hard blows to the face. I knew if the officers couldn't stop this, someone would end up in the hospital. I saw one officer reach for a big can of MK9 pepper spray on her duty belt and spray the boys, including me and several others. That slowed down the fight enough uh, for the boys to be restrained. There was a radio call quickly made reporting a fight and that we needed assistance. We knew backup was on the way, but the boys got out of the, of the restraint holes and started to fight again. I was glad and relieved to see help arrive. Both boys were handcuffed and escorted to security, which is like a separate jail inside the prison. Wow, that was an incredible ordeal, wasn't it, um, at a church service? I visited Chaz three times this month and counseled him each time. Uh, he had been convicted of capital murder. He had been waiting to be transferred to a facility that had a capital offender program. The first thing I always talk about is the victim and their family. He is remorseful, which is the first step to getting forgiveness and peace. When he first arrived, he would stay in his cell all day and not talk much. I could tell he was really hurting inside. I gave him a Bible and several good books about forgiveness. I always follow up on the boys that I give books uh, to to see if they have any questions. On three different follow-up visits, the boys had re uh, received Jesus as their Savior as a result of reading the good Christian material. Chaz told me that he had read the books in two days. After he received salvation, we started working on the many issues that he had. He still can't talk about the terrible crime he committed without getting really emotional and shutting down. 
He said facing the victim's family in court was devastating for them and for himself. He was recently transferred to another facility, and I hope he will grow in grace. I was asked to give a death notification to a 17-year-old boy named Marcus. His 14-year-old brother was murdered. Someone knocked on his mother's door at her residence while she and her son were watching TV, television. Uh, she answered the door and a teenager pushed her to the side and shot and killed her son in front of her. The killer ran down the sidewalk, jumped in a car, and sped away. The police still do not have uh, any suspects to this day. Please pray for Marcus and please keep praying for this ministry. Thank you, Paul Jant, your missionary. And then he got a little note here, Chaz and Marcus' names have been changed, so he's not giving us their real names. But, you know, uh, I appreciate Brother Jant, and I have no idea how many uh, teenagers will be in heaven because of his ministry. And not only just his ministry, but he's helped start uh, juvenile ministries in a bunch of different states and in a bunch of different uh, churches that, you know, have people that go into juvenile detention centers around the country. Isn't that a blessing? And... Uh, I remember uh, hearing someone say that the hardest group in America, you know, you think it would be the old guys that are hardened, have been in prison a long time, but actually it's the 17 to 22-year-olds. They don't have a conscience. And uh, that's really sad, isn't it? They need the Lord. And that's why we run our buses, I mean, our blue buses, and try to reach as many little kids as we can while they're little. I mean, while they're little, that's the time to reach them while they're little in the formative years of their life. Because if we don't reach them, I'm telling you, the world will gobble them up and they'll, they'll do, you know, I mean, they could do care, terrible things. And so we just try to get to them before the world does, so to speak, and try to reach them for the Lord. Amen. All right, let's sing one more song. Let's stand together one more time. Then we'll have the message. 393. 393. I wish I'd given him more. 393. By and by, when I look on his face, beautiful face, thorn shadowed face, by and by, when I look on his face, I wish I had given him more, more, so much more. Thank you. you. May be seated. If you have your Bibles, turn to Proverbs chapter number 12 again. And uh, we kind of pick up where we left off in Proverbs chapter number 12. Well, I'll tell you, I love the Word of God. Don't you love the Bible? It's a blessing, isn't it? It sure is. 
and uh, it just works us over and works on us. And I've been studying and, and all this in Proverbs uh, 12. And man, I just think this is so awesome. It's such good stuff. And uh, we're going to look in verse number 15. And we're going to go down through verse number 19. So we'll, we've got some other verses that we'll look at uh, as well. But Proverbs chapter uh, 12, and, and uh, I don't know what I said. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse number 15. The Bible says, the way, uh, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Take your Bibles and turn back to uh, uh, Romans chapter number uh, 10. Romans chapter number 10. Hold on to Proverbs there because we're coming right back there. But uh, Proverbs chapter number, or Romans chapter number 10. And uh, talking about the way of a fool, the way of a fool. And uh, Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number, let me turn this on. Uh, verse number one, the Bible says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Now look at verse number three. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So self-righteousness, being self-righteous, it's, it's, that's, that, that's the way of a fool. Now turn back to Romans chapter number 1. Romans chapter number 1, and we are pretty familiar with Romans chapter number 1. And uh, Romans chapter 1, verse number 17, the Bible says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now skip down to verse number 22. Verse number 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Wow, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed, look at this now, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not. Convenient. I'm going to tell you something. It's very important that you and I as God's children that we understand how important truth is. How important the word of God is. Okay. And again uh, the Bible says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Okay. Uh, and the, uh, the Bible says this in, 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 uh, in 2 Timothy 3.2. It says for men shall be lovers of their own selves. I mean, that's where we're at in the world today. Men are lovers of the, their own selves. They don't care about the righteousness of God. You know, fools don't take counsel well. They don't. And they don't, they don't take constructive criticism well. They bristle and when you try to correct them. Why? Because they're proud and they're self-righteous. It's all about them. I don't want to be that kind of person. We probably all were like that when we were of our father, the devil. I'm glad I'm not, he's not my father no more. I got a new father. Amen. I'm a new creature in Christ. Now look at the, the rest of the verse there back in Proverbs. The rest of the verse says, But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. He that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. And so the wise man, on the other hand, the contrast here uh, between uh, the way of the fool uh, is right in his own eyes, but a prudent man covers shame. So it's the contrast. The wise man, on the other hand, is willing to listen. He's a good listener. 
and he listens to constructive criticism and correction. And, you know, our lives, man, I'm constantly making adjustments uh, in my own life to be better for the Lord. I want to be better, man. I don't know it all. You don't know it all. We've got to learn and we've got to grow. So the question is, how do we receive constructive criticism and correction? Fools don't receive it well. The wise do. Well, I want to I be wise enough to receive correction, okay, and, and receive it well, okay? Now, uh, go ahead and hold on to Proverbs and turn back to 2 Timothy chapter 4 real quick. And uh, I was chasing rabbits today while I was studying a little bit. But 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 2. And the Bible here, the Apostle Paul's writing under the inspiration of, of, of God. And, and uh, uh, he's given a charge here to young Timothy. It says, preach the word, preach the word. Uh, this is uh, 2 Timothy 4, 2. Preach the word, be instant in season. I mean, we just got to be ready. I mean, we got we to gotta let, it, let it out, man. Just herald the words. I mean, sound it out. Preach the word. And, and, and instant in season and out of season. We just got to be ready at any time to give, give an answer to the hope that's inside of us. And then it says, uh, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And the word reprove, it has to do with we, we, we to blame, to charge with a fault. Amen. When I got faults, man, I got failures and I mess up, man. I like Bible preaching that reproves me, sure. that helps me to get right. Amen. And if I can't handle that, then that, the problem's on my end. A lot of people, man, they don't get right with God. They just change churches. Right. They go down the road and, and get them an ear tickling preacher that doesn't preach the Bible. Well, man, I like Bible preaching. We try to bring them in here, man. Brother Dennis Coral, Brother Chris Dallas, man, those guys are heat seeking missile. Brother Freddie, I mean, we bring guys in there. They're not. They got backbone, man, to preach against sin in the day and age we're living in. I mean, man, it takes some guts to, to get up and throw down. I mean, I was proud of Brother Bob Sunday morning preaching on hell. Wasn't that good? Man, I listened to that. Uh, I went back and listened to it uh, uh, yesterday, I think, and and I thought, man, that was good. And a very powerful message from the Word of God just on hell. And he just gave a lot of Bible verses on hell. And I thought, man, this is good stuff. And that blessed my heart. And I like that because, why wow, you don't hear much preaching on hell anymore. And, uh, but again, you know, uh, sin must be confronted if, if sinners are going to be convicted, okay? And, and then the word rebuke, I mean, that's a sharp reprimand for a fault, okay? And, and then, of course, we know that, uh, you know, that exhortation is like encouragement, okay? So there's a, you know, but I mean, two-thirds of preaching is, is, I mean, it's in your face and get, you know, get right with God, amen? I mean, and, you know, we got to quit the sin business, okay? And uh, I like it, amen? I like it. And that's what puts me under conviction by the Holy Spirit of God, and uh, long-suffering in doctrine. What a blessing. Now look back in your Bible, uh, back in, in Proverbs again. And uh, look back at verse number, um, let's see here where we're at here. Yeah, look in verse number um, 16. The Bible says, a fool's wrath is presently known. Okay, so when a fool loses his temper or her temper, everybody knows it. There's been some times in my life when I was just out and out foolish. I was acting like a fool. Because you know what? You know why? Because I lost my temper. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand right there. Amen. We're all in the same boat, aren't we? And, and again, flying off the ha handle and, and out of control and, you know, throwing things and doing all kinds of things that we're all ashamed of. And we all got temper stories, okay? The Bible says in James 1, 19 and 20, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, Slow to wrath, slow to wrath. And he's talking to the brethren. So we're supposed to be, as God's children, we're not supposed to be like we used to be when we were easily, you know, and, and I was talking to somebody the other day, and he said, Brother J.D., I, we were eating breakfast together, and he said, Brother J.D., I've got, an, I've got issues with anger. I really do. I've got issues with anger. And, you know, my heart went out to him because, you know, uh, you know I, I've been there. I know exactly where he's coming from, okay? Anger issues. And I, I don't want to act like that no more. And I, I want to I be wise enough, okay, uh, to stay in control. The Bible says, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. When we're out of control like that and we're in the flesh, we're, we're not, you know, that's not the righteousness of God coming out of us. No, no, that's the that's wrath of man. I, I don't want to be that way, okay? It worketh not the righteousness of God. But the Bible says in ver the last part of verse 16 there, but a prudent man 
covereth shame. So in contrast to the, to the, 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 wrath, the fool's wrath, it's presently known, everybody knows the person's lost his temper. Well, in contrast, a prudent man, a, a sensible person will control his anger, okay, and the urge to lose his temper, okay. And, uh, you know, I used to say, well, I got a short fuse, and I mean, I had all those little whatever's trying to justify me flying off the handle when it was, it just was on me. It was, the anger wasn't coming from their heart, it was coming from my heart. Coming out of my heart. That's where the anger was coming from. Out of my heart. They weren't pushing my buttons or no. It was, the, it was anger inside of me that was coming out of me. And uh, put it under pressure. It was revealing what was already in my heart. And I just don't want to have that stuff in my heart no more. I'm telling you. Uh, angry people hurt people. And I don't want to lash out at people like that. And, and hurt people no more. With, with, with the way I act. And with my mouth. And, and so forth. Fools lose their temper. The prudent man, the wise man, he keeps his cool and, and he avoids the shame of losing their temper. We had a couple of boys in our school, this very, very seldom, we had very, very few fights. But we had a fight the other day. You know, getting down to the end of school and kids start getting cabin fever and, and all of that. But we had a couple of boys that got into it. And boys are going to be boys and foolishness is bound in the heart of, chi- of a child. It don't matter if you go to a Christian school or whatever. Once in a while you're going to have a problem. Somebody say amen right there. Usually it was usually my kids or, or you know somebody's kids, but anyway, uh, the, the, one of the boys that got in, it got in, uh, into the fight, it really bothered him. After his, oh, he was so, I mean, he just wished it would have never happened, and I, I wish it would have never happened either. But I was I was glad that he was remorseful, that it, it was bothering him, that he lost his temper. That's that's a good sign, amen. Because you know what bothers me is people can lose their temper and it doesn't bother. That's a problem, you know what I'm saying? But it ought to bother you as a child of God when you get in the flesh and handle something wrong. That ought to bother you. Amen? That ought to bother you. That ought to bother me if I don't handle something right. I don't want to be that way no more. Fools lose their temper. The wise do not. What about old Pharaoh? Pharaoh's a good Bible example of that. You know, Pharaoh in Genesis chapter 3, all the way through about Genesis chapter, or Exodus rather, Exodus chapter 3 through Exodus chapter 15. You know, he's going to let the people of the Lord go, but then he'd get mad, wouldn't he? He'd lose his temper and he'd, he'd change his mind. I ain't going to let him go. Moses would say, let my people go. You know, God was telling him. And Pharaoh, man, he's a knucklehead. And uh, he'd lose his temper and get mad, and then, man, there'd be another plague, and then another plague, and he'd find, you know, and wow. And then I thought about Esther. Esther was really wise. Esther kind of went before the king. Remember that story? She went before the king, and, and she wanted to invite the king and Haman to a banquet. Oh, yeah, she was calm and cool and collected, and she knew that they were building gallows for Mordecai. And he was a Jew, and she was a Jew. Esther was a Jew under the radar. But you know what? God gave her wisdom. She wasn't out of control, and and, uh, no, no, she wasn't. Man, she didn't lose her temper and all that. No, she just very skillfully, God gave her wisdom how 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 to set that thing up. And guess who got hung on the gallows that were built for, for, for Mordecai? That was wicked Haman. Yeah, didn't God, isn't that awesome how she, I mean, how the Lord did put all that together. You could look that up in, in, uh, in Esther chapter 5 and in verse, you know, that whole chapter down through there. It kind of gives that story. But, and there's foolish people in the Bible. There's wise people in the Bible. Look at verse 17 very quickly. It stopped raining now, y'all. And he that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness righteousness. I'd like that to be my testimony. Wouldn't that be good to have that testimony? Man, that guy, he's a straight shooter. He just speaks the truth. Speaks the truth. Speaks righteousness. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. Wow. That's what I want to be. I just want to be very careful to speak the truth in love. Just telling the truth, it demonstrates righteousness. In a court of law, even, you know, I've been to court a few times in my life and they tell you to raise your right hand, you know, and, and uh, you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. And, you know, you, you take that oath that you, you, while you're under oath, you're supposed to tell the truth even though people lie under oath. Some people just lie through their teeth even under oath. It don't mean nothing to them, but it means something to God. 
that you and I as his children would speak the truth and it, it, it reveals the righteousness of God that's in us. You know, remember in Acts chapter number 7 about Stephen. Boy, Stephen spoke the truth, didn't he? He let the hammer down and he got stoned, but he spoke the truth to, to, you know, to the council and they, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Man, they didn't like Bible preaching. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, that's about where we're at today. But we got to continue even in soul winning. There's a soul winning application, you know, to, to that, you know, just again speaking the truth and being a faithful messenger to the Lord, uh, you know, of what God's done for us. And Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Oh, yeah. I want to be wise like that, don't you? I want you to be wise like that. Wow. Then look what it says. The rest of the verse says, But a false witness... Deceit. So again, it's contrasting for us there. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness, deceit. Okay, dishonest people will lie. And again, someone said a lie will travel two miles while the truth is putting his boots on. Take your Bibles and turn back to 1 John very quickly. 1 John. 1 John. And I love the Bible. I love the old Bible, the precious old Bible. 1 John, look in 1 John chapter number 1. I remember years ago I was at a preacher's meeting. I don't remember what church it was at, but I remember Brother Tim Whitfield, who was a missionary to Kenya for many years. Tim and Kim Whitfield, we supported them for many years. And, and I loved the Whitfields. And then they came back off the field. And, and uh, he, he pastored a church in Mountain View, Arkansas for several years. And now he pastors a church in Jonesboro, Arkansas. I love the Whitfields. But Brother Whitfield's daddy, he was an old-timey, straight shooting I mean he just a man of God and he preached a message and the title of his message was liar 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 pants on fire and I never will forget that title amen and uh, liar 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 pants on fire now look in in first John chapter number one in verse number five the Bible says in first John 1 5 this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in Him, in God, is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, look at this now, we lie and do not the truth. You know, there are a lot of people who give lip service to Jesus and they don't really walk with Jesus. A lot of them don't even know Jesus. They've just learned the, the language, so to speak, and they're lying through their teeth. That's why the Bible talks about the, the wheat and the tares and all, you know, gives a lot of examples about that. They grow up together and one day the Lord's going to do all the sorting out, the goats and the sheep and so forth. Look at verse number 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, one with another, fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That's lying. Amen. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you, chapter 2, verse number 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. We want to walk the Bible way. We want to walk the way the Lord walked. Amen. Now look in chapter uh, 2 and verse number 20. Look on down a little bit further. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. 1 John 2.20 And ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. 
But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, uh, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye, shall, ye also shall, uh, shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. There's always going to be that crowd that's trying to draw you away from the truth, draw you away from righteousness. Now you've got to be careful about that. But the anointing which ye have received of him, the unction of the Holy One, abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no what? Lie. Is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Man, I'm glad that I'm born again of the Spirit of God. Amen. That I've had that second birthday. And man, I'm telling you, my fruit now, it's not the fruit of a lost person. It's the fruit of a righteous person. Man, I love living for God. I love serving the Lord. Look in chapter 3 and verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. There's all kinds of junk going on in the world today. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. I'm glad I'm not on the devil's side no more. Amen. I'm glad I've been born again of the Spirit of God. Look in chapter 4. Look at, verses 19, at verse 19. 1 John 4, 19. We love him. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have, have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Hey, you're my brothers and sisters in Christ. I love y'all. I love y'all. We be brethren. Amen. That a blessing? Say, so who put that love in your heart? God did. God puts that love in my heart and your heart. Man, we're just like a big family. We're closer to each other than we are our own blood kin. What is that? It's the Spirit of God. Amen. It's the Spirit of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Turn to chapter number 5, 1 John 5. Look at verse number 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because he hath not believed the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That you may know that you have eternal life. That you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Wow, what a blessing. Man, I don't know about you. I'm just glad I'm saved. Man, uh, I just want to speak the truth in love. Amen. Turn back to Proverbs very quickly. Look at verse number 18. The Bible says, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. Now this is not talking about uh, here. It, it, it's not connected to the Word of God. Okay? Uh, the Bible talks about Hebrews 4.12 about the Word of God being quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. This is not talking about that. This is not a reference to the Word of God. Verse number 18 that says, There is that speaketh like the piercings of the sword. Hey, this is like using your tongue to cut somebody, using your tongue to hurt somebody, using your tongue to offend somebody. I don't want my tongue to be used like that no more. Amen. I want to have a righteous tongue. I want to have a good tongue. I want to have a clean heart and clean hands so that the good would come out of my life and out of my tongue and out of my mouth because good is in my heart. Wow. But the tongue of the wise is health. So in contrast to that tongue that cuts people and hurts people, that sharp tongue, that cutting tongue, 
you know, hurts people's feelings and wounds people and so forth. Uh, you know, I don't want that tongue, but the tongue of the wise is health. What does that mean? Well, you know, the wise tongue is it's a healthful tongue. It's a healthful tongue. And, and you use your tongue to help people that are hurting. Isn't that a blessing? Somebody's hurting, and boy, you can use your tongue to encourage them and, and to pray for them. And I mean, wow, what a blessing. The wise tongue do, doesn't swing back and forth like a, like a sword and, and slashing and dicing people and hurting others. That's not what a wise tongue does. No, the tongue of the wise person heals. There's commitment to speech that heals. Look at verse 19, we'll be done. The lip, I had to look at that twice because I thought it said lips, but it just says lip. The lip of truth shall be established forever. You know, honesty and truthfulness, I mean, there's long-lasting benefits. Man, I, I, I guarantee you, man, the lip of truth shall be established. What a blessing to preach the truth. What a blessing to believe the truth. A lot of people don't even have a clue. And what a blessing that, that we got a Bible. I mean, we got God's Word sitting in our lap. And, and what a blessing to teach it and, and to teach the truth. Preach the truth. Believe the truth. And what a blessing. Forever, O oh Lord, thy Word is settled in heaven. Oh yeah, there's lasting benefits to just honesty and truthfulness. But a lying tongue, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. I'm telling you, God's word is going to last, outlast all the lying tongues that were ever created. Lying tongues try to invalidate the Bible. They try to make like the Bible no big deal when the Bible is a big deal. But a moment's not very long. A moment's not very long. Man, I'm glad tonight that I can get on my knees and say, God, I want to have a clean heart. And I want my tongue to be a good tongue. And I want my heart to be a clean heart. I want my heart to be a sweet heart. Brother Roloff used to sing a song. He used to sing a song. I know it as a poem and I know it as a song. It would probably be better if I quoted it as a poem. But I'm going to sing it as a song tonight. It went something like this. Keep in touch with Jesus. Though the path be dim, let no power of evil sever you from him. Joy or trial meet you, joy or sorrow meet you, friend or foe you meet, keep in touch with Jesus. Keep in touch with Jesus. He will keep you sweet. I found that to be true in my life. If I just keep in touch with Jesus, he helps me to be sweet because in my flesh and in my own, man, I'm, I'm raunchy. I'm as raunchy as the next guy, amen, because my flesh is not saved. And I have to whoop it down every day, and so do you if you want to stay right with God. Amen. I die daily. The Apostle Paul said that I die daily. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I am now living in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I just want to, I want to have a clean heart tonight. I want you to have a clean heart tonight. If you don't take a bath, you stink. Hello? If you don't use soap, you stink. And I'm just saying, hey, the Bible talks about the washing of the water of the Word of God. Man, it just cleanses me. It cleanses my mind and my heart and my everything. I need it, y'all, and you do too. Let's bow our heads tonight. We'll let Miss Crystal come play for us. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the Word of God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. I pray tonight, Lord, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And God, you give us a, a people, Lord, that have the heart for righteousness and for, for doing right and telling the truth. And Lord, help us not to be a liar, 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 pants on fire type Christian, Lord. God, please help us to, to love you, Lord, love you. And if we confess our sins, you said you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, I don't get it right all the time, but Lord, I pray you'd help me to do better. I pray you'd help our people, help our young people to do better, dear Lord. Cleanse our minds and our hearts tonight and our hands. Help us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. If you need to come tonight, we invite you to come. Search me, O oh God. We've said it often, the time to do business with God is when God's doing business with you. He's not like a light switch. 
just flip him on when we get ready. No, he said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. I mean, we've got to work while the, uh, for the night cometh when no man can work. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. One of these days, it's all going to be over with. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. All that's going to matter a hundred years from now is what we did for Jesus. It's all that's going to matter.